he passed away in 2016 and a couple of years before that he was in he was in your living room like you know he's a big fan of your music he covered one of your songs um and i just like you make me cry i just i just wonder what what it's like to 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 have that support because like he really is the ultimate supporter of incredible artists like like if he gets behind you like he will he will and he he also like just finds artists out of nowhere as well like you know yeah. like like he's like the ultimate like tastemaker really when it when it when it comes to i agree music. with you like i remember meeting him and like one of our activities that we did was to watch he loved watching comedy and like documentaries and <laughs> live performances yeah. and i remember one of our first um our first interactions was watching Esperanza Spaulding's performance at Austin City Limits Festival. And he just had it because he had recorded it off telly or whatever, and he had it lined up to show us. I was with my band and we were all at Paisley Park. <laughs> we were all very, you know, we were acknowledging how surreal the moment was in the first place. And then he shows us Esperanza Spaulding. Um, I was already a fan and then just knowing that he that's just that's what he did he spent his time absorbing loads of you know talent and finding people just like how he found me just out of the blue I don't know it's just did he ever tell you that like, was, it, was it like a website like was it like a, a performance on YouTube or like he uh, found me, I think, because a friend of a friend of his had played him, my ET, my first EP. And then I did a, a performance at the Scala and it was live streamed or something was live streamed. I can't remember what it was, but he watched the live stream. <laughs> so he was like, I just watched your show and I'd like to talk about it. And then I was like, okay. Sure. So then he called me and we just talked about music. We talked about um, songs and he asked me if I liked Joni Mitchell. I was like, of course, I love Joni Mitchell. And he's saying um, how he, you know, liked my song Age. And then he wondered if it had been written about him. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> Just, I don't know, just the most incredible, surreal conversation that the, that was then cut short because my uh, phone battery died. So I could hear the, the thing beeping and then I said, oh, I think my battery's going to die. He's like, it's okay, we'll talk again. And I was like, okay, cool. And then we did, you know, we stayed in touch and we maintained and it became a genuine friendship to the point where I could just call him up and say, how are you? Or send him a new song and you know not even ask him what he thought of it i'd just send him stuff you know so mm. he knew how i was doing and then he'd give feedback and if i'm yeah i don't know i really i kind i miss him yeah of course like uh... i miss him i miss like just you know knowing that he's there and it didn't hit me for a really long time that you know, the, that he had actually passed away and that he was actually not coming back forever. I and I just, I don't know, it was really, just really tough to deal with. I had so, I hadn't spoke to him, you know, for a few weeks before he died. So I was just, you, all those things come through your head. I like, oh, just wish I could have said something like, how are you? Or, sent him another email or I don't know just something stayed in touch better but that's I think when people pass away that's something that always goes through your head yeah yeah you've done better yeah, definitely I think that's what, <laughs> that's the, the the sort of common the common yeah. feeling is like when was the last time you spoke and well like what I gathered from from that was like he's he's just tunnel vision music isn't it like it's just like yeah it, it's not even it's it's beyond the passion it's like it's an extension, really, of, of yeah. who he is. Because, I mean, his output was always incredible. Yeah. Um, and 
I would encourage you to watch uh, his most recent appearance on Arsenio Hall. Um, he had an interview and he did a performance on that show. And he asked like a bunch of us to come be in the audience. So it was like, like <laughs> me and then like all of his life. friends, his music friends and just, you know, lots of other amazing black female instrument playing, you know, just his kind of people that he really cared about and, and encouraged. So we were all watching him do this fantastic interview. And in the interview, I think you should watch the whole thing. But yeah, I definitely will. He said, he said, I think Arsenio said something like, you know, what was your first job or something like that? Like, what, what did you do? And he was like, I looked in the phone book and I looked at all these lists of jobs and I thought, I don't want to do any of that. None of that's at me. And then he said, so I spent the, the, the he spent every waking moment working as hard as he possibly could to do music and that's what you've just said he you that's what you see when you think of him it's just his unapologetic uh point of view musically and with himself using himself as like a canvas for his expression and just getting it getting his point across like this is who he is and that's what that's the message i think that he's he's sort of passed on to to the rest of us is just to be the best you can you can possibly be it's a it's a testament to to him like because like how hard he worked and uh, like yeah. hard work and talent will get you to wherever you want to be because it's not like he had anything handed to him like i mean he did like, that's what i'm he, saying too like he yeah, wasn't yeah. he wasn't off the like ilk of pop star that that was like Actively that was necessarily privileged or yeah. had like loads of opportunities given to him you know i, I watched the a, a, a i watched a show um oh, it was done by the guy who made king of the hill and it was oh, cool. about it was like a an animated thing about um old funk bands and it was like stories behind the scenes and yeah. there was stories about how when prince came and uh would support rick james on on tour and yeah. like rick james would get really paranoid and freaked out that like prince was better on him so like he would, he would continuously like, over the years try and get a bigger set than prince would have wow. and, yeah. and, and it was just like it was ridiculous but i don't think prince yeah. cared prince didn't care he was just going about his, his business exactly just that's that's the thing you just gotta just do you and it's so hard as well and this this whole industry is so like competitive and like I said with Instagram and things like that just everything trying to make you feel bad about yourself or just trying to make you feel like you're not as good and it's just like put that all away what do you really want to do what do you really like and just follow that and keep doing that and that's the most happy you can be I think is when you're truly you know when you've pushed away all of the sludge to find that thing that truly makes you feel like yourself and feel happy. You sound like that on your new album. Like I, the word, I'd, 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 oh, written, I'd written, thank I'd written, you. I'd written down the word like, and it's a word I don't use because it's such a cheesy, heavy word. But it, it feels like I wrote down. It was like it feels like it was a freeing experience to write that record. Um, and I, yeah, I stick by it. Like I mean, all the so songs in it bring me joy, and they, and they hit, they hit hard. Um, and you know like they bring cathartic joy when they need to bring cathartic joy the 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 melodies and the guitar playing like make me feel like happy because you know it's like that balance of like happy sad um, yeah yeah but, but it's just I, cathartic what is it catharsis yeah and it yeah. it sounds like a it sounds like a record that it, that's you if you know what i mean thank you so much that's the biggest compliment when if anybody has said that to me about this record that's the best possible thing because i was i got to, that's why i called it leanne la havas as well got tired of feeling like i could have done better with the last album you know feeling like i could have if i'd just 
had my opinion go across just a little bit more or if I had just made put my foot down a bit about this other thing that didn't happen you know I would have felt even prouder of it I'm very proud of all my albums don't get me wrong yeah. but like those the last one particularly was really in so many ways amazing to make but so not me <laughs> to make like I just wanted to do my own a and r for example I wanted to just pick the ones that I wanted to do and I remember having you know heated discussions let's say with people at the label um you know about about which songs were going on it and I was like well why don't you trust me why don't you just trust me to be able to write a good enough song and and know what I want to say on my album you know but I didn't I also back then I didn't really know those things as well I was a bit younger I was learning and like I said I had just been to Jamaica realized how like how deeply important it was to do that with my mother and loads of shit was going on mm. so when I got around to this album I was like it's got to be called Neanderthal Havas and it's got to have all my own decisions on it yes. because now I can stand by it and if anyone says something like oh I don't really like that song or blah 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 blah, blah about this I'm like cool I don't care because <laughs> I like <laughs> it I did it all myself yeah you can have it. you're welcome to your opinion but you know when you know when you've got that one piece of doubt about something that and then somebody just one person says that thing and you're like oh i knew it i, <laughs> like I wanted to avoid moments like that on this yeah, yeah. well it's a, like i mean i haven't heard the whole thing because i haven't i haven't i haven't want you to that. hear the whole i haven't thing. got the record yet but um it comes out when's it come out I don't know. Seventeenth of July. Boom. Um, well, I can't wait. I can't wait to hear the whole thing. I'm sure I'll, I'll, I'll badger like whoever it is at your record label for a for a sneaky sneaky copy. But I just we'll... received the like the finished vinyl. Did you did you do an unboxing? How, how... I did actually, because <laughs> all of my band uh, are on the album, so I did a little video for them, and, and then I thought maybe I'll pop that on on the socials that's nice you can all it? see the packaging and i got this sticker as well that comes on the shrink wrap even that was designed uh or co-designed by myself so yeah it just feels like a really significant thing to me this almost feels like my actual first album yeah anyway. it, it's like the first album of a new chapter isn't it yeah it's, it's my first album doing it because I wanted to do it and I did do it and every intention I had which was to have a live band on it to produce it myself to choose all the songs myself and make sure that everything was a story to have 10 tracks to just everything feels right for me mm -hmm. wow. and that is it, it, that's something that I think I don't know I, I feel like I wish I knew that earlier like that it could be like this yeah. and now yeah. i feel really proud of 